Yes. Yes. Then I'll start. I, I, I'm aiming to finish within the 20 minutes. Yes. My paper examines how diasporic Syriac Orthodox Christians, they're called Syrioi and Syriac, search for their identities and how such a social assertion of the self has an influence on the Syriac Orthodox, Orthodox Christian community in Northeastern Syria where they regard as a part of their homeland. Now, since Syria here means the Hasaki province, many of these Christians live in the SDF-controlled area, SDF. Syrian Democratic Forces is composed primarily by, of course, and then Arabs and Syriacs and other economic minorities. So this is a map of Northeastern Syria. And the green zone is controlled by the SDF. The, the, the Kurd controls this area primarily. And these Christians, Syrian Orthodox Christians, live in the border zone between Turkey and Syria. And the Turkey claims this area as a proposed safe zone. Theologically speaking, the Syriac Orthodox Church is one of the Miphasite Church of Antioch, which is the capital of ancient Syria. This is my old photographs. And I think many of this part of close to the Antioch is destroyed because of the war. The diaspora of Syriac Orthodox Christians began due to the collapse of the Ottoman system in Anatolia. Massive population movement massacres and reappropriation of resources and the creation of fear and hatred between the various religious and ethnic groups culminated at the time of the First World War. Syriac Orthodox Christians as well as Armenians and Greeks were obliged to emigrate from Turkey, some settled in northeastern Syria. So, so this that Christian persecution is called Seipo among these Christians, and the symbolic year is 1915. So they call the 1915 the year of the sword in Syria, it's Seipo. And 2015 was the 100 years of anniversary to commemorating this event. And mainly the Syriac Orthodox Christian immigrant living in the Western world, they inaugurated all this monument of commemorating this Christian massacre. And in Syria, there's no monument before, the, before that, before. However, they inaugurated in Damascus, in the capital, and the second largest state in Aleppo, and as well as Northeast and Kamishri. This immigrant population of Syriac Orthodox Christians in Northeastern Syria have been deploying their communal identity by fusing their religion with a political identity as Syrians. Syriac clergymen have taken an active role in promoting such a religious political identity. The Syrian regime under President Bashar al-Assad has recognized clergy as representatives of the community. The government entitled the clergyman to the judicial authority in the field of the family law that deals with family and domestic relations. The government acknowledged the Christians to enjoy the freedom of association, which means the people in the same denomination come together and organize meetings only under the umbrella of the church. As the representatives of the community, Suryoe, Syrian Orthodox Christians, the clergy have attempted to indigenize the relationship of Suryoe, Syriac Orthodox Christians, with the land of Syria by using biblical history. By doing so, they claim Syria constitute part of their ancestral homeland. This is a pre war time relations between the clerics and the communal members, ordinary lay people. So it's a complementary relationship. And the clergy is the 
representative of the community in the sense of the, as a spiritual leader, as well as political representatives acknowledged by the government. And community members, they engage in the economic and secular and social activities. They support these clerics as their representatives. This is a com complementary relationship between them until the war broke out. The pre-war argument of Syria identity in Syria is the age that their liturgical language, Syriac, derived from the, that of ancient Arameans in Syria, and that ancient Arameans are thus the ancestors of contemporary Syriac Orthodox Christians. According to the biblical genealogy, the ancestors were descendant of Elam, who was the son of Shah, who is the ancestor of all the Semitic tribes, including Arabs. Their religious identity can justify their ingenuity as Syrians and prove their genealogical and fraternal relations with Arabs. Thus, many in the Syrian community in Syria showed little interest in ethnic identities of their group. Many of the Syrian Orthodox Christians did not claim an ethnic identity different from that of Arabs, which is the majority Syrians held. Their Christian identity neither isolates them from other Syrians, nor put their positions in society in stake. During the Syrian war, different jihadist groups killed and oppressed Christians in the Northeast, as they are Christians. Under such a situation, Syriac immigrant idea of stressing their ethnic identity has become more persuasive when they politically collaborate with Kurds in Northeastern Syria. When Syriac diaspora has continued, the diasporic community has enlarged. Some Syriac immigrants have started to emphasize a secular interpretation of the religious components, such as their liturgical language, Syriac. They transformed the historical and cultural bond between Syriacs and their homeland into ethnic ones by reallocating their religious attribute to ethnic ones. Communication mediums such as internet and social media can reconnect diasporic Syriac Orthodox Christians dispersed across the globe. Through this medium, wherever they live, they, can con they, can co they are connected to this global village of Syriac Christians and can develop and share the argument of Syriac identity. It means Anyone can interfere with the domestic affairs in their homelands, such as those in Syria, and can share their ideas and opinions with other Syriac Christians via social media. However, they are, under, they are unable to provide solutions to the problems with this community mood. Some Syriac Syriac claim that they are ethnic Arameans, as they are descendants of ancient Arameans. Others insist, as their community has maintained their language Syriac since the time of the Assyrian Empire, they identify Syriac ethnically as Assyrians who are descendants of ancient Assyrians. The war in Syria provided Syriac Christians not only with imaginary homeland, but also as an opportunity for initiating and participating in the ethnic movement in northeastern Syria. Such ethnic movement has culminated in the form of Syriac militant involvement in the war. Some Assyrianist military forces in Northeast understood the Kurds approved them as allies. They pursued a self-defense strategy and attempted to establish political system based on federalism, 
which acknowledged the right of existing ethnic groups in eastern Syria. A Sionist started to cooperate with the Kurdish YPG, Democratic Union Party, and in 2016, joined the SDF, Syriac Democratic Forces, which is the alliance of Kurdish, Arab, Syriac, Assyrian, Armenian, Turkmen, Circassian militias. Ironically, their commitment to the military and the political events in the region has accelerated the politicization of Syriac Orthodox Christian community. The idioms of their territory, security, and human rights become the emotional fuel, emotional fuel for claiming the explicitly the violent politics of identity. Such movements split Syriac Orthodox Christian in northeastern Syria into different factions. Some Syriacs supported the federalist-like ethnic movement and others co and, and their collaboration with the Kurds. Others did not. I'm going to show you some of the examples. The photo shows the explosion in the Christian uh, the district in Kamisiri in the northeastern Syria in 19... Uh, 2019, and why the Christian quarter is attacked by the ISIS is that it's because of the SDF has a sort of confrontation with the, the Turkish forces, and SDF has to work to protect their own territory, and they cannot sort of fight against the IS like in the before, when they had good alliance with the US. So this is one of the interpretation why the Christians are attacked by the ISIS. It's because they, ha they have the collaboration with the Kurds. And then the, one of the, so the incident, it's related to this collaboration with the Kurds, is that 2016, the Syriac Orthodox Patriarch visited commissary in the Northeast for inaugurating the monument of commemorating sort of the, the monument of the Sefer 1915 massacre of the Christians in commissary in Northeast. And the Patriarch was attacked by a suicide bomber. He survived. And according to the media report, this attack might be the work done by the ISIS, but it's question mark. We don't know exactly who did. And in this situation, there is kind of the doubt among the Syriac Orthodox Christians. And they say, can we actually trust Kurds as our allies? It's coming from the memory of the massacre, 1915. The who attacked the Christians at the time of the massacre at the end of the Ottoman era. It was practically Kurds collaborated with Turkish officials. And Kurds has been their neighbors for hundreds, hundreds of years, but they fell to Detroit. That's a present understanding among the Christians. Yes. And then in 2018, the Kurdish self-administration announced the closure of the the schools run by churches in Syria. And the Syriac Orthodox Church also has been running the schools, in particular at the elementary level, in the several schools in the Northeast. And this news was really made the Christians really furious. And the, they're among these community members, they're the people, the organized faction which collaborate with Kurds, it's called Tauronoyo. And Syriac Orthodox Christians in social media severely criticized this faction in their community. This is a fluctuation of the community of the Syriac Orthodox Christians and as well as politicization of this community. Since the outbreak of the war, 
securities and lay people have expanded their influence over the Syriac uh, political movement. The number of Assyrianism supporters in Northeast has increased. The state stru structure fluctuates. The authority of the clergyman declines. To maintain their authority, they together with the lay people tend to involve in the competitive race between Assyrian and Aramean blocs for justifying the claims of the Syriac identity. Such intergroup conflict exhaust and undermine the Syriac identity. This is a current situation as a sort of secession of the community. And there are two sort of groups, two kinds of groups, roughly speaking. And both clerics and laymen so join this kind of group argument. One side emphasizes the ethnic identity as Assyrians, and other side also claims the ethnic identity as Arameans. But this group is more oriented to the religious identity. And these two groups has a sort of the, the big argument across the globe, and it's created sort of the division within the Syria community. Bateson defines such a situation of symmetrical seismogenesis. He claims when the both complementary seismogenesis between the two parties, it means the both situation in Syria, and the symmetrical seismogenesis between them are present, a counter of effect is generated and the tension between them is reduced. In the case of the Syriac community, the complementary seismogenesis, which means the complementarity and hierarchical relations between the clerics and the lay people, they did not accelerate the division within the community. Its complementarity has diminished due to the decline of the clergy's influence on the Syriac community under the war. The symmetrical seismogenesis, which means the tension between the Assyrian and Alamian blocs, has enlarged the both the clerics and lay people's participation in this political power game within the community. Is there any way of preventing such secession among the Syriac Orthodox Christians? That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening to me.